Night City, home of legends in every shape and size. To leave your mark on this place, you've got to be willing to stand apart, or the city will swallow you whole. Got to do something original, like I could have a silver hand and go by Johnny or something. No, that's dumb. That would never work. I could have a grenade launcher hand, though. That'd be way cooler. To maximize my coolness, though. Why is that a stat? I've got to live by something like a code. Something to be remembered by. Something like, can you conquer the city with only the projectile launch system? To clarify the recipe for this legend, I'll only be using the projectile launch system to deal damage where possible. Car and Johnny sections of the game are kind of out of the player's hands, so for the purpose of this run, we're going to ignore those. For the purpose of semantics, you can't do most runs because this game has essentially what are interactive cutscenes. Anyway, folks that are more familiar with the game might have read the title and said, of course you can. The train game was pretty good, which is exactly why I won't be using it for the run, with a single exception. See if you can guess what the literal one instance I have to use it is. This already means that I can't hit enemies with cars, my hands, or anything meaningful, but that's easy. You know what's not easy? Something that is very hard. But you know what? I dare say that's not good enough. Crafting makes things easier, so that's out. So does being able to buy things like healing supplies and gear. So to heck with it, that's out too. I'll be scrounging for myself like the goblin that I am. Money will only be spent for quest options, my launch system, and its ammos. On the topic of cyberware though, you might see where this is going. There is a mandatory eye, hand, and OS implant. Those and the arm cannon are all that I'll be using. I won't even be adding anything to the launch system other than said ammo types. No invisibility, healing, double jumps, etc. You name it, I don't got it. Additionally, I won't be using quick hacks for any form of combat. I think I used maybe one to open a door for story reasons. I'll take the stats you start the game with, and no more. Here are my stats at the end of the game, along with all of my perks. To clarify, I didn't acquire any. Honestly, I went through character creation with my mind kind of off and didn't realize I could start with no stat changes, so this run could have been made even slightly harder, but what's done is done, and this took ages. Basically, I looked at what this game had to offer, and I said no. Now, I started the game as an employee for a megacorp called Arasaka, a name that is drilled into the player like implants in every person in the city. My boss kills a lot of people and then asks me to kill another person. Sounds like a fairly typical corporate work environment. So this is the future, huh? Why isn't everything chrome? I carefully steal anything and everything I can get my hands on at a local bar and meet up with my partner in crime. I was really quickly found out, and before even getting close to trying to assassinate some bigwig, I lost my job and the use of most of my body. Jackie wishes me well, though, and saves my life in more ways than one. He helps me get patched up, get some work done, and the game begins proper with the two of us ripping through a place to save a life. And by the two of us, I mean I don't currently have any form of weapon, so... This one's on you, my man. You've got this! I believe in you! The poor bastard doesn't have a health bar, but he does have health. When he takes enough rounds, he drops like a sack of potatoes, and I have to wait for him to recover. He's able to slowly work his way through the room, while I contribute by re the enemies inside. I need to not stay out for long, because they'll kill me faster than I have any hope of handling. I also need to not get too far away, or Jackie will follow me, thus not being near enough to enemies to help our progress. We eventually get through, save a life, we get into a car chase. Stop shooting me! I can't even shoot back! I eventually stab myself enough times that the enemy driver is so distracted by the sheer amount of medication entering my veins that he crashes, presumably killing all of their passengers. Honestly, who chose them as the driver? I see my doctor about getting the implants that I need. Have to get new eyes and a new hand. Of course, can't forget the new arm cannon. The arm... shit. Looks like I'm gonna have to get to street cred level 20 to get the launch system that I need. How bad could that be? Well, time waits for no one, so I meet with a guy named Dexter, who definitely wasn't all over the promotional material for the game. Seems trustworthy. Meeting me for the first time, and pretty much immediately wanting me to pull a major heist. Great plan, all around. I'm out to steal a piece of tech. To accomplish this task, I first meet with the person wanting it. She has me go through a recording of where it's being kept using future tech, but somehow records things from a hell of a distance and details that I can't really even begin to explain until you've tried to edit something like audio where everything is on the same track. Shit just doesn't really work. Sufficiently advanced tech is indistinguishable from magic, though, I suppose. I need to get my hands on a glorified spider bot. To get it, I first blackmail the lady, we strike a deal where she hands me a blank check that she bugged. I remove said bug, and make my way to the sale. Something that the people in my personal life know quite well is that I am exceptional at navigating. Exceptionally bad at it, but that's beside the point. I tried to do some side content along the way, but that didn't quite work out. I walked into a gang base. They put on a big show, trying to be all spooky. Had a sit on a nice couch though. Nice enough at least. They got really aggressive about getting paid, but realistically they're not even asking for much money. Honestly, dude, I'd rather just hand you the funds. You guys aren't even worth the effort. I grab my new row buddy, and it's time to go. Well, shit. I'm gonna need a solution to get out of here in one piece. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Wells. Yeah, that'll do. I can't! I'm not a high enough level to get the arm implant! I'm just here to carry ill-gotten goods, my man! This place is a gold mine! A danger-filled gold mine! 
Jackie shot our way through a whole lot of enemies, ending out by combating mechs that had way too much health. This took a while of just letting him take care of things. Believe it or not though, he didn't even go down through this part. Dude's a machine! We then stared down a firing line of Motex soldiers, and a guy I accidentally saved looked the other way, letting us leave unharmed. I'm okay with that outcome. I sit down with the crew to pull off a heist, which I'm sure will go off without a hitch. This game kind of perpetually has a setting up the heist sort of feel. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, quite the opposite. An interesting feel that I'm really not used to. Things haven't been easy by any means, but the game is very dialogue heavy. A lot of downtime before each storm, you know? We make our way to a hotel. Nice place. So nice that the staff just ignore me stealing things like medical supplies. We send a spider bot that's so sophisticated that I have to use cameras in the hotel to navigate. Looks like there are cameras hooked up to a network through most of the rooms in this place. Which won't be a legal or ethical violation in the future. In an effort to make this section feel less pointless, I have to navigate the spider bot to a different section of the room to redirect the staff, then leave. By God, was that a satisfying use of my time! We use the bot to keep a guy out of the picture temporarily, and we make our way into the penthouse suite of some guy. Son of the owner of this massive corporation who's also the emperor or something, nothing major. We pull a huge mysterious case out of a big and fancy fridge, and nearly get caught. We pop into this... this is a maintenance shaft? What the heck am I supposed to maintain here? There's no room. Well, the emperor, his bodyguard, and the final boss all show up to scare the shit out of Jackie. Look at the poor guy, doesn't know what to do with himself. Then son kills father, as tends to happen. And it's here that I have to wonder. For the amount of people with eye implants, who the hell doesn't have a camera to record things? Then again, faking video evidence is probably incredibly easy by now. What constitutes proof of anything in such a society? Our hacker is killed as we make our way outside trying to get out, which goes swimmingly as we're shot down. This of course damages the case, so the item we're delivering has to be put into Jackie's head to hold it together. Now to get into this place, we had to give up any and all weapons on our persons, so it's really important that we're not spotted. Where did you get those? Jackie, where did you get those? Come on, motherfucker! Let's dance! Why are you going backwards? This section had me spending a really long time while just trying to help Jackie along. He takes cover based on my location in the area, and he's useless at long range. So I had to get close enough for him to be meaningful, but also not die. Some of these areas were trickier than others, but I could recover health by standing out of combat for a while. You can heal some, and even save your game when you're not in combat. So, popping back and forth for a while to save on medical supplies. My reward for getting by the soldiers was being attacked by a mech. Real nice. We escaped via automated car that will allegedly mow down an army of enemies, but leaves me to fight drones on my own. Because of course. This section isn't optional. If you get far enough, you just die instantly, so I had to use a weapon for the first time this run. Also, this is my first time firing a weapon in this game, which felt weird. My aim may not be good, but holy hell this was bad. The premium package of the top-of-the-line cab service we're using can't be bothered to take us anywhere we want to go, so despite having cannon healing juice in a can, my best friend died to bureaucracy. Also, I now have the chip in my head. Goodbye, Jackie. With the whole thing having gone sideways, my fixer has a change of plans. Wants to tie up some loose ends, and I walk in looking a little too frayed for his liking. I wake up as somebody else. Somebody angry at the world. Somebody with a gun. Get down! Johnny, no! I'm not supposed to be using that! Why is this a scripted section, man? Why would you do this to the run? We get out of the helicopter, and it's canon that these events that are playing out aren't necessarily accurate, so we can't really know for sure if I'm actually doing any of this at all. But really, I let Rogue handle everything in here, because Johnny never got the cyberware necessary to do otherwise. I do have to shoot some cable to proceed, and then I have to shoot my way through some guys, because Rogue sure as heck ain't helping here, and these guys need to be dead to proceed. Things go pretty smoothly, up until Adam Smasher Adam Smashes. Hey, that's a nice projectile launch system you got there. Or can I get- Johnny is killed and converted to data that is now in my head. I wake up in time to see my fixer getting fixed, pass out, and wake up in a car. There, I pass out, wake up, and throw some mandatory bullets into a tire. Dude kinda ends up crashing on his own though. I fling a few more, and once again, the guy basically blows himself up if you really think about it. A funny man jumps onto the car to dance for us, but we're in a hurry. With that in mind, I of course pass out. Nothing passes time quite like being unconscious. Oh, bollocks. Save time! I'm trying to save time! I'm up! Totally awake. I called a cab service that I don't think was technically serving me anymore, but sent a car anyway, and I'm out. On the way, he saves my life again, and then my doctor does. Johnny tries to end it, and I now have a brain buddy. His mind is slowly overriding mine, and I'm dying. You know, typical Tuesday. Alright, now I've been doing a lot of leveling. I spent ages doing as much side content as I could, while also not being able to manually fight anything. A few side jobs make that relatively doable, others mandate combat. Assaults in progress can be completed by way of running in, grabbing something, and running out. They don't give a ton of street cred, but there are a ton of them. A lot of things are much higher level than I am, but there's one key detail. I don't need to beat the enemies, I just need to survive them. So as long as I can get in and out without being one-shot, I'm golden. 
most enemies are one or two shotting me right now, but over the course of many attempts at most of these encounters, I was able to grind out enough experience to finally hit street cred level 20. With that, I can finally, mercifully, shoot back. Thanks, Vic. I meet with my new best friend who wants my help to prove that Yurinobu killed his boss. Also wants to help fix the whole biochip in my head thing. He sets me, though, in the direction of some contacts. Johnny also allegedly doesn't want me dead anymore. I have to hunt down the lady that hired me in the first place. A lot of stealth and lying got me through pretty safely. She's missing, and I found this piece of shit on my hunt. I'm coming back for you, you fucker. I followed up to find a ripper doc that... God, I wanted to hit him. I wanted to hit him so badly. You a badge? Why would you ask that? If I wasn't suspicious before, then I would be now! Do real dealers say this kind of thing? If so, I think I have a lesson to give on how to be a better illicit good dealer. Don't do that! I pretty much just ran through a lot of the area I needed to get to where Evelyn is being held. Once you get inside, any enemies that spotted you just vanish. I scour through some of her memories and find out that she was just another pawn in someone else's game. I take a break to try helping out Goro. We go asking around for information and help. Once we have some ideas of how to get to the sister of the murderer of the Emperor, I take a break from that to go see a gang about getting help with my current condition. They want me to sneak into a no longer abandoned mall to get some information. Simple enough. I could theoretically shoot my way through, but they want stealth. I'll give them stealth. Also, this section ends in a boss fight. She heals way faster than I can even hope to do damage. You can literally just walk by the boss fight, though, if you're undetected. So... I got to a dude holding a badge that releases some hostages and lets me walk away in exchange for letting him leave. Which I kind of needed to do, since I can't hit him. He's even nice enough to have his men not attack me in any way, shape, or form. I spent a really fucking long time trying to get through these guys, so exiting through the front was a really pleasant change of pace. Back to the gang, one of them is really upset about my betrayal and not disposing of the agent, but their leader is willing to help. Because I went in a lot of different directions, I took to helping Rogue instead to get information on the guy that had a hand in making the chip that's killing me, which involved helping a young lady named Panam. We set up an ambush when this run hit a really weird hitch. The projectile launch system has some really weird projectiles. It shooting and blowing up is silent. It will only draw attention if I'm visible when an enemy is directly hit, which I'm pretty much guaranteed to be visible, but it means that missing has really no repercussions. Which is good. What's not good is that most of its ammo types, despite all being variations of explosions, can't break glass. I do mean most, though. If you guessed that the single use of Trank ammo would be used to break a single pane of glass, then congratulations! It's the only one that can for reasons that I just don't understand. Who the hell decided that ammo that puts enemies to sleep should break windows? But the grenades, fiery grenades, electric grenades, poison grenades, other fire grenades, because there are two for some reason, just... Not one of them can even scratch it. I guess that's why it's called knockout gas, though. Knocks things out of my way. We spring our trap and it's finally time to show off our projectile launch system in action. Or get shot through a wall. Okay, take two. Well... Fuck! So something I learned slowly over time, this thing is a close-range weapon. Its accuracy is horrible. The hitbox on it is super inconsistent. I could hand feed these explosives into the mouths of my enemies and they still wouldn't get caught in the blast radius half the time. Do you see that reticle? Yeah, that massive reticle? They don't travel toward the center, it's closer to right here. But they seem to also be heavily affected by whether or not you're moving when they're launched. If I were to talk about all the bugs that I experienced while playing this, then I wouldn't be talking about anything else for most of this video. So to sum it up, these things are hot garbage coming out of my arm. The only real bright side is that they have infinite ammo. I can fire three uncharged shots in a row before a five second cooldown. Doing so does next to no damage, and I might as well be sending them my death certificate so that they can sign off on it for me. I can fire two charged shots before getting the same cooldown. They're closer to sending said certificate, but they have to go get their own pen first. It's slightly better for me. Also, despite doing minimal damage to them, they'll one-shot me most of the time. I favored using electric projectiles because they sometimes stun most enemies, which was a godsend. I have next to no real damage mitigation, so having bullets not fly for a few seconds was always welcome. While I was trying to break in the new arm, Panam ended up clearing out most of this area. So, thanks for that. Carrying on. We steal her vehicle and her stuff back so we can get out of here. I guess that's why it's called Cargo. She then wants us to go on some petty revenge mission to kill the guy that screwed her over, which is incredibly irresponsible. And I am here for it. Gun him down! This room taught me a lot in terms of how to handle encounters. Enemies can often shoot through walls, so cover is more of a suggestion. I had to get good enough at moving up to get a shot off, while also having a good enough idea as to where enemies would or wouldn't shoot me, because their bullet penetration feels really inconsistent. My shots, on the other hand, often do nothing. Best case scenario, my enemy is standing out in the open, near enough to a lot of separate instances of cover that I can pop out of and then cower behind. Failing that, I can stagger my shots with stuns to try to keep a single enemy out of a fight long enough to mean something. Additionally, because my weapon is silent and I miss a lot, sometimes enemies just get bored of me. 
they de-aggro, and I'm allowed to save my progress. So even if I screw up, I can just pick up from where I left off. Easy. Especially with snipers involved, it really wasn't. But we got it in the end. We murdered our way through one issue, and she gets me stuck doing some mandatory shooting. Followed by more mandatory shooting. We set out to impress the ship out of the air. I let her do it because, you know, not a launch system. And when all else fails, rockets. It does a body good. Well, mine, not theirs. They're crash landing into enemy territory. Panam's family tries to help them. The EMP somehow broke our communication in such a way that they can hear each other, and we can hear them, but they can't hear us. Then I get more things I gotta shoot. A lot of her family then gets slaughtered. You know, your average Wednesday. Shock damage does more against machines, of which there are multiple. I hardly know what I'm doing, but they didn't stand a chance. This genuinely went by shockingly smoothly. Uh, that... You, you pretend you didn't see that. Panam saves her buddy, I follow some tracks, get into some unnecessary scuffles, and spent entirely too long in this bit. I shot my way through, I ran through, I even snuck through, but there's no way around it that I'm aware of. Had to knock him unconscious. And no, you can't shoot him from the outside room either. Tried it, and only killed the guy next to him. He's about as useful as an empty sack that once contained potatoes. And man am I hungry. I hand him off to Goro, and he's apparently struggling to find a square meal lately. Poor guy. We have a long chat of what once was, where we came from, where we're going. And he's not a good person, Hitman's bodyguard and all that, but I really enjoy the character. To get to our target, we need to break into a place making floats and hack into the system. Easy. Just gotta get it in and out. Nobody needs to know. No, 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 shit! Okay, that's fine. Just gotta be smooth. Gotta keep cool. Fuck it, run! Go, go, go! Move! Move faster, you useless limbs! <sighs> okay. Can we run that again, but not screw it up? I'm not particularly good at this. But you know what I am? Persistent. And outside of your aggro range, you bastards! When I was a young V, Takamura took me into the city to kill some sniper mans. He said, V, when you get there, would you please kill them so I don't get shot? The men with long ranged guns. He said, Will you defeat them, the snipers, and all the other hostiles? Fulfill plans we have made, because soon now, I'll leave you to handle, to bring down my disciple, to breach this large parade. Oh, duh. More like, oh, damn, this guy's fast. That was, that was fucking terrible. I found that running in circles was useless unless you're going over gaps. He slows down to clear them. Otherwise, I can only keep enough distance that he isn't actively butchering me. His slowdowns give enough time to get a shot or two off. Otherwise, when you see him stop, he's going to start blasting. So hug your cover, because otherwise it'll go around it. Enough healing and you should be fine. Or you could just be like me and be incredibly good at games. Just look at how talented I am. You know, sometimes it hurts to be this good. Like, how would I even hope to get better at games? Things are so much easier with this level of unparalleled skill that I possess. Listen, I put up with a lot of bugs from this game and it finally broke in my favor. I could probably still do it without him glitching, but I saw an opportunity and I'm taking it because I'm really fucking bad at games. This fight still took ages, even with him not moving. My weapon does next to nothing for damage. Didn't help that I only found out later in the fight that I should have been using a different element. I ended up sparing him at my friend's request. Goro tries talking things out with the daughter of the dead emperor, Hanako. That goes as well as anyone can expect, given that he was labeled a traitor, and I guess we're kidnapping her now. I met back up with him, and we try once again to just talk things out, which isn't going great, but things only get better when the whole building gets hit by more bullets and explosions than are ever necessary for a rescue mission. Or at least a safe one. I got separated from the unfazed by the universe around him, Goro, and this section took a while. The visibility in here is terrible. Lights specifically made to obscure your vision, the cover here is dreadful. I very slowly picked off enemies that I could and retreated to the room that I fell into to wait out the aggro timer. Saved for safety, rinsed and repeated more times than I'd care to remember, and I worked my way through the building to save Goro because I'm not leaving him behind if I can help it. We split up to better evade our pursuers, and Hanako shows up wanting to talk to me through a proxy person. Weird messenger methodology, but here we are. Basically, she believes me and wants to help, but I need to help her with the murderous brother situation. I'm out of other things to do, so I call about finally getting help looking at the chip from the leader of the Voodoo Boys group. We get to see Johnny being an abusive piece of shit, and we get another mandatory Johnny combat. I shoot one guy a few times and then get stabbed. He gets back up and onto the warpath. The crew shot a whole lot of people for me. Nice and easy having three of them to do it. Worked out so well that they even did the driving portion for me. It went less smoothly when none of them would recognize turrets as enemies, so I had to break those. Wait, I'm sorry, how is this a boss? Why does V get people like Oda and Johnny gets Akira? And I know the general theory as to why it's so easy, but what was that? I didn't even have to do anything. 
Turns out he was assaulting Arasaka to try to retrieve Alt, who had been captured. Found that she was more or less gone forever, so he wanted to blow it all up. That's the story, at least. They try to lure out what's left of Alt, which goes... Well, she says she should be able to help with better supplies available. And up waking to find a lot of the Voodoo Boys dead from an attack by the Netwatch people, which is apparently my fault. Oops. The ones that survived weren't so bad. This place has plenty of cover and corners, so popping in and out of either worked a treat. Hey, Placide! I know you're upset, but this is my first playthrough and I was playing mostly blind. I didn't know so many of your friends and family would end up dead. I'm sorry. Come on, man, don't be like that. If you keep it up, I'll have to kill you too. You know I'm just gonna sit in the doorway shooting you until you die. Come on! Well, no shooting sense into some people, I guess. In all seriousness, this boss one-shots me at even semi-close range, so I made use of the door. They who control the doors control Night City. And I have very powerful doors. The chip gets closer and closer to killing me. Johnny takes me somewhere to talk things through. Promises he'll choose to say goodbye when push comes to shove. Would die to keep me living. All performative if you ask me. I'd like to believe him, but... Side note, if you know why, you know why. But God, killing this fucker was satisfying. Now it comes time to choose how things are going to end. What the last struggles of the run will look like. The man who claimed he'd take a bullet for me asks for help. I tried to do so, and he completely ignored my boundaries. Other people can enjoy their drugs how they want, but I ain't about that lifestyle. I denied it every time it was presented through this game, and he tries to force it on me. Maybe it's just an oversight on the devs, but I stand by that Johnny's little promise was a performance. Trying to make himself feel better than he is. He wants to do something heroic to feel like a big person, but when life gets mild, when life gets complicated, his promise to be there for me was nowhere to be seen. I've heard enough of that shit in my personal life, and I just can't trust this guy. So I reloaded. Not this time, Johnny. I'll do this on my own. Vic does his best to help me out, and I ship out to go to war with Goro. This section... This hell of a section. From the time that I get here until every enemy here is dead, I can't save. I have to do this in one go, or not at all. I'm one shotable by the snipers. There's a mech, they're elite soldiers, and if I die, I have to sit through a really long driving cutscene that I can't skip. I was spotted any and every time I tried to get close after bringing down the mech. There isn't any decent cover anywhere between the car and the building, so I needed to work out a plan. Well, enemies don't spawn until after I'm done speaking with Hanako, so as soon as I got out of the car, I needed to book it. I chose specifically the left side because it's really easy to sneak by the enemies on that side to choose a better position. But avoiding combat isn't an option, so I searched around for a place to start shooting from. The roof didn't seem very defensible. If I got rushed, then I'd be screwed. There isn't much cover. What would be the plan, then? Run around like mad while shooting at anything that moves and get really lucky. Honestly, I didn't really have any grand strategy other than shooting anything that tried to push forward until nothing did anymore. Then I slowly creeped out, fired a shot, and ran back. Again, I could die really quickly, and I spent way too long in this section. It's been a bit since I had to do it, and I'm still sick to fucking death of that goddamned car scene. Just let me skip it! Fuck! After rescuing her from captivity, we head to the Arasaka headquarters. I meet with a digital copy of the Emperor. He's still sort of alive. We try to talk things out with the board of directors, but then Yorinobu's men shoot up the whole place. With the help of her men, Goro and Oda, we take a large section of the building. We fight through so, so many soldiers, but I can save. So I chip away at their numbers, pushing further and further. Last to go. Final boss himself, the Night City legend, Adam Smasher. He spends most of the fight charging at you or Goro. He's slower than Oda, his ranged attacks aren't very threatening. He summons in mobs, but they're one-shottable. Honestly, Adam was surprisingly easy. I'm fairly sure that I could have done this without Goro here. The turrets on the side of the arena do more damage than he does, and their aggro range sucks, so they just didn't do much. Smasher goes down, and Yorinobu has nowhere left to run. Johnny is pretty rightfully upset with me. Yorinobu seems to hate Arasaka as much as Johnny. He allegedly wanted to destroy it from the inside. The Emperor, an evil man that hurt countless people across over 150 years, finds new life in the body of his son as he overwrites the kid. His daughter is second in command, loyal to her father. Nothing changed except a little less hope in the world. But what else could I do? Just trying to survive. The doctors, some of the best available, tell me that there's nothing else that they can do. I can leave and die by winter, or I can sign away all of my rights and let them medically kill me. Create a copy of my consciousness to implant into a body someday, as long as they fulfill their promise. But when don't they lie? Goro promises one day to show me what real food tastes like. He's an honest man, and I need to hope, I need to cling on to hope that he's not lying to me. Then again, what is consciousness? How can you quantify it? How could anyone ever know if it's me or just a cheap copy on a data chip? An unfaithful recreation of what I might have been like when I was alive. 
A moment. If only for a moment, I shook parts of the city to its core. I made my way through every trial and tribulation with only the projectile launch system. And I won't even be around to know. Will they remember me? Will I die a legend? Will I be anything more than a collection of zeros and ones on a thumb drive? Would it even matter if I was? Was it all worth it? See you in the major leagues, Jack. No. I hope you enjoyed your time here. You probably know how to use social media, and I hope that means I'll get to hear your thoughts now and on any future outings. Importantly, lead a life worth living. You've only got the one. Remember to stay safe, spread some kindness in the world, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.